I know you can't tell, but I have something in my eye and it really hurts. Please hold. Another day in paradise. You guys like coffee? I'm a fan of coffee. Is this a nerdy gaming unboxing channel or a coffee ASMR channel? I just don't know anymore. What is going on my fellow magic fanatics and otherwise equally epic nerds? Trey here coming at you from my office of awesomeness. I'm not gonna do it today. I'm seriously just not. I don't have the energy. Ah, oh, fine. Office of awesomeness. And on today's episode, I've got uh, I've got some stuff to open. Who would've known? As you may be able to see the purposely placed products right here. I've just got some uh, War of the Spark themed booster packs. Is that what they're called? Yep, that's what they're called. Today's episode, guys, I dare to pose the question. All these Magic the Gathering themed booster packs really worth your money? No, seriously, like I'm actually genuinely curious because I've, I've never purchased any myself either, so. Anyways. I believe I paid uh, $43.99 or in and around there, $42.99 or something like that for all five of these packs right here. You can typically find them at Walmart or Target, depending on where you are in the world, for around like $11.99 a piece, if I'm not mistaken. That's Canadian dollars, by the way. Gotta save money where I can to afford my equally epic coffee addiction, right? Right, so these theme booster packs from Magic the Gathering are something that's uh, relatively new. I'm not gonna say like extremely new. They've been doing it since Dominaria, I believe. Essentially, you can just crack one of these theme packs and uh, almost build a deck right right out of the gate with it by uh, just adding like 25 lands or something like that, it says. White, red, blue, black, or green. Anyways, all in all, in my personal opinion, I think the theme booster packs were a pretty good idea from Magic the Gathering. It's, uh, I think it's a little bit better just to buy a pack that's designated towards the color that you're trying to build or collect or, or pull a card from. Know what I'm saying? Know what I'm saying, man? You know what I'm saying? Maybe you don't know what I'm saying. Anyways, whether you know what I'm saying or don't care what I'm saying, shall we quell my curiosity from the question that is, are these Magic the Gathering theme booster packs really worth your money? Let's find out. It's party time. Red, green, black, blue, and white. Choose your color, in this example it's green. Enhance your green deck with 35 cards from War of the Spark, including at least one rare or mythic rare card. Add 25 lands to start building a 60 card green deck. Oh yeah, or whatever color you choose. Now let's see if we can have a spicy party, shall we? First theme booster pack, we're gonna go with green and see what can happen here. I actually have never opened these, so I don't know if there's like another pack inside of these packs or what the deal is. Oh, that is awesome. Look at that, I like how they uh, how they protect them. That's pretty cool right there. Their own little special sleeve, whoop. Ooh, what was that on the back? Looks pretty cool. Oh, just a reference card. Is our rare right at the front? Oh no, our planeswalker's right at the front though, that's okay. Arlen, voice of the pack, and I don't know what I don't know what goes on here, so we're gonna see. I don't know where the rare card is or where the where where the rare card is. There's a little reference card of what to do on your turn. If you'd like to see what to do on your turn, pause the video right here. Okay. And like I said, I don't know where the rare card is. I do know these are in focus though. So we've got Arlen, Voice of the Pack, as our Planeswalker right there. We got Mo Wu, Loyal Companion. So it looks like we got our Uncommons up at the front. Whoa, we got another uh, Planeswalker. So two in one pack, that's pretty cool. Yang, Yangu, Jang, Yango. Whole oh, three Planeswalkers in a pack. Kiora, that's all right, right there. And then I'm assuming, was that, did I pull my rare? No, I didn't, I knew I didn't. What's going on here? So we got our commons right there, some more uncommons, Bound of Flourishing, yeah, yeah. Ooh, a Fire Mind Vessel, I'll take that. We got some uh, not green stuff in here. It looks, oh, Paradise Druid, I do need that. So this is pretty cool, I like uh, I like the variation of this. Wow, Storm the Citadel, so these aren't too bad so far. Of course, your commons, Nissa's Triumph, Sahili Silverwing, Giant Growth Troll, Thing, Witch, Emergent Zone, wow, that is a good uncommon. Awesome, nice, let's keep this going. Semi-rare, no, Primordial Worm is not a rare, come on, what a scrub. This is Triumph. I feel like I got that already. Maybe I did. And, and, are we getting close to this thing or what? We got Ugin's Conjurant. Blast Zone as our rare. You know what? Not horrible. Not exactly what you want. But guess what? You get what you get. Next. Let's uh, try our luck with blue, shall we? So I really like how they uh, package these. I wasn't sure if they were in their like own separate pack or whatever, but that little like sleeve, that's uh, that's pretty decent right there. I don't know why I'm showing you just the front card there. Let's get right into this. Look, what to do on your turn again. Let's uh, let's go. So we know the rare is right at the back right there, but let's just get right through to see how many Planeswalkers we can get. So here like Silverwing. Oh, Narset, that is awesome. That is a good uh, good Planeswalker hit right there. Kiora, ooh, a Kasmina again. Cool, man. So you get a couple Planeswalkers out of each of these, which is pretty awesome. I mean, at least for 
War of the Spark. Wall of Runes, I hate that card being played against me. Same with Eternal Skylord. Yeah, yeah, another Wall of Runes. Cool, we got some more blue stuff. Augur of Bolas, that's a good blue card. Keep on keeping on here. Relentless Advance, uh-huh, yeah, more blue, more blue. Another Wall of Runes, literally getting a playset of Wall of Runes, almost a playset of Lazo Top plating as well too. Okay, all right. Hey, another Emergent Zone, can't complain there. Another Augur of Bolas, a Sky Tether. I don't like that card either. Naga Eternal and... Oh, banger, come on. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Seriously though, not a bad banger right on the end. Thanks for coming to the party, Ral. I should also mention that this uncommon Narset is like almost the same cost as Ral, but you know, next. On to our red theme booster pack. Uh, personally, this is one, this and the, the black one. I mean, I want to open the black one because of uh, obviously Liliana, but right now myself, I am uh, primarily running mono red. Let's get in focus there, camera. Um, unfortunately, no real uh, value town tickets thus far. We've got, uh, I mean, that Narset and that Rowl are obviously pretty good, but nonetheless, look on your turn. Oh, I'm doing this like a Pokemon pack almost. Jeez, Louise, get with the program. Going back and forth. We got a Jaya Planeswalker right there. So it seems as though you're going to get a couple Planeswalkers in uh, each of these theme packs, at least as far as War of the Spark goes. Boom, to Bolt. Currently running him as well, too. Your opponents can't gain life. Seriously, that is a, a slept on ability. Nahiri, never used her. Never going to use her, probably. And then we got some Bonds of Passion and a Crunch and a Goblin and another thing and a Tabalt's Rager. Little Demon. We've got a Hellion. We've got some Goblins. We got a Grim Initiate. Heatfire Wave. More common. Common, com uncommon, back and forth. Oh, that was decent, but I threw it right away. Honor of the God Pharaoh, Chandra's Triumph, Grim Initiate. Yes, 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 enough cards to build a 35 card deck for sure. Ooh, Cyclota Cycloptic. Cyclops Electromancer. It's another card I was thinking of using, probably not going to though. Spellbringer Weird, Sarkon's Catharsis. Try and say that 10 times fast. And, Hucha! Wow. A Mizium tank. So much for rare super fire. Next! On to the white, saving the best for last, or hopefully the best for last. Um, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say, as far as like value goes, um, for pulling like rare cards, so on and so forth, I think I'd rather buy like three booster packs for the cost of one of these theme packs. Unless, like I said, you're like building a deck and there's really just like a bunch of stuff that you need. And we're gonna start off with a Dovin right here. Mr. Dovin, a Tayo, which I've never really seen uh, seen him ha see any play. Wander Strike, a Johnny's Pride Mate, phenomenal card, and I love the new art on uh, the Johnny's Pride Mate cards. Seriously, much more bad ASS than uh, its previous art counterpart, might I say. Let's just, uh, let's get right through some of this, right? Let's go, come on. Quick time, nothing, 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 nothing. Another Johnny's Pride Mate, which is actually awesome. If you were building a white deck, you would need some more of those. Oh, and we've got, that was only one Planeswalker I think we got. Ignite the Beacon, come on. Speaking of a Johnny, that's me right now yelling at the sky. Where's all the spicy pulls? Next. Saving the black for last. Hopefully gonna get something uh, relatively decent out of here. Honestly, uh, for what we got so far, not doing too great. So I guess it's not like a planeswalker right off the hop every single time, which would make sense. Let's just hope it's uh, a Liliana lurking in the background. That's our theme for today. We're just hunting Lilianas. I mean, I was really realistically checking uh, what was inside of these. Hey, check it out. That's actually not too bad at all whatsoever. Davriel, he's uh, not fun. Millie out right there. Kaya. Ob Nixilis, wow, three Planeswalkers back to back. I, I don't know if that means our uh, our luck or possibility of getting a Lily is SOL now. Let's get back and focus there. And let's keep on keeping on. Oh, back in focus. Eternal Taskmaster, God Pharaoh statue, we got lots of those. Kaya's Ghost Form, Aid the Fallen. Let's get these back in center. Bleeding Edge, Vizier of the Scorpion, Soren's Thirst, Bond of Revival, Tith Breaker Giant, Dread Malkin. Herald of the Dreadhold. All right, some more nonsense. Davriel Shadow Fuge, Eternal Taskmaster. That's not a bad card. Kai's Ghost Form sees a lot of play. Spark Reaper, Charity Extractor. Another uncommon Emergence Zone, which is a good uncommon card. And that's not my rare just yet, but Lazotep Behemoth. And then Storev. Well then. All in all, as far as value goes for these theme booster packs, at least for myself today, nothing too crazy. Definitely taking a hit on buying all five of those, but that's the name of the game, right? You win some and you lose some. In the end, guys, all I'm gonna say is if you're building a color-specific deck, then yeah, these uh, these theme booster packs are definitely the way to go. If you're just uh, mythic and rare hunting out of uh, booster packs, 
I suggest just buying those. So yeah, I did need that rowel though to mess around with this, so always gotta look at the bright side, right? All in all, probably not gonna buy them again unless I'm building a color specific deck for, I don't know, Core 2020 or something. Anyways guys, thanks for coming to kick it on today's episode with this total nerd right here. That's pretty much gonna sum it up for this short review of these War of the Spark themed booster packs. Don't forget to uh, bolt that like button for three if you're catching my horrible magic puns. As always, to my fellow magic fanatics and poke enthusiasts alike, you guys train on, game on, stay epic, stay awesome, and until that next episode, peace.